This is Drew Brees, one of the most competitive individuals who has ever walked the face of the earth. It sounds like a joke, but, but if he wanted to do it, if they were joking, well then the joke's on me. So we got a really interesting piece of news yesterday in regards to Drew Brees, which I don't know if this is a marketing ploy, but I really wanted to take a day to figure this out. We had Dennis Allen comment on it as well, but I felt like it's something that definitely deserved a conversation at the very least, because it's still very interesting and the memes about this are absolutely hysterical. So before we get to the content, congratulations to Muffin Toes for winning our $500 giveaway. We announced it on my community tab as well. We're still giving away two of my followers on Twitter, $250 each if you guys want to enter that. And I'm open to any suggestions for giveaways in the comment section down below. Now that we get all that out of the way, break! My wife's the one that told me about it because I don't follow social media. So I thought, well, I, that's interesting. That'll bring up some questions tomorrow at the golf tournament. So <laughs> yeah, but certainly, you know, I, I think it was a comment made in jest and we certainly hadn't had any conversations in that regard. Mike Chuck 1212 what's going on everybody? Mike, why wasn't this video made yesterday? This is yesterday's news. Well, I'm gonna be honest with you guys. I will always keep it real with you guys. We recently lost someone very close to us, unfortunately, my family, and we're Jewish. So the mourning process is a seven day process. It's called sitting Shiva. And as a result, not to blame the unfortunate personal circumstance that I was going through, but I felt like the quality of my work was taking a little bit of a hit. I got duped by this horrible source for the Ben Roethlisberger video, which was the to literally the morning after. In my video on the New Orleans Saints, I called Cameron Jordan, Jordan Cameron, which is kind of funny because on their draft days, the Cleveland Browns who drafted Jordan Cameron called Cameron Jordan to notify him that he's been selected by the Cleveland Browns. But at that point, Cameron Jordan was already in New Orleans meeting the New Orleans Saints. There's like a whole gag about it. You had that TV show, The League, doing something on Cameron Jordan and Jordan Cameron both showing up. But I digress. I wanted to apologize to you guys. I personally, noticed it. I had to take yesterday off. That's why I couldn't get this video to you guys way, way sooner. And I hope you guys can understand. Now, with all that being said, we have some really interesting news. Four days ago, we made a video on the New Orleans Saints signing Jarvis Juice Landry to a very tiny, minuscule deal. I mean, a one-year, $6 million deal for a five-time Pro Bowl wide receiver is an absolute steal. And this is after an offseason where, bear in mind, the Saints went into this offseason with a horrific cap situation. I mean, the cap situation was so bad that many people actually hypothesized that the reason why Sean Payton decided to step back is because the New Orleans Saints ability to acquire new talent seemed very bleak. A lot of people thought that they were headed for a full scale rebuild. Either that or the fact that Sean Payton was very comfortable with Drew Brees or maybe Sean Payton just wanted to take some time off and actually try broadcasting for a little bit. Either way, there's a lot of speculation out there and the fact that they were able to come out of this off season significantly better than they were last season is very very impressive at that. Now, yes, they lost Teron Armstead, who was considered as the top free agent in the entire NFL this past year, but they did a remarkable job filling his void in the NFL draft by selecting Trevor Penning out of Northern Iowa. Now, we don't know if Trevor Penning is going to work out, but at least that need was addressed right away in a significantly cheaper fashion. But in addition to that, they traded up to the 11th overall pick and drafted Chris Olave out of Ohio State University. Bear in mind, they already have Michael Thomas in that team coming back from an injury and they signed Jarvis Landry. They already had Marquez Callaway who was breaking out as well. So it seems like at least offensively, when you combine that with the fact that they have Alvin Kamara, they have Mark Ingram, who's a great locker room guy. They have Jameis Winston, who honestly, you might be saying, okay, it's Jameis Winston, the guy that led the NFL in passing yards while he led them in interceptions as well. Last year, he did a pretty good job taking care of the football. Offensively, of course, this team is boomer bust. It's all on Jameis Winston's shoulders to perform, but defensively, they signed Tyron. Matthew, Marcus May, they already had Demario Davis, they have Cameron Jordan, not Jordan Cameron, and Marcus Davenport rushing the passer, and Marshawn Lattimore as well. This team is the biggest boomer bust team in the NFL, primarily because we don't know how Dennis Allen's gonna do in his first season as the head coach of the Saints, and we don't know if Jameis Winston is going to be able to sustain a full season while actually taking care of the football. But what if instead?
instead of Jameis Winston, the New Orleans Saints were able to bring back Drew Brees. Surely he would never consider doing that, right? Well, Drew Brees did some pot stirring yesterday with a very interesting series of tweets, starting out with this Instagram post where Drew Brees posted this introductory press conference of Jarvis Landry saying, man, dot, 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 signing Juice Landry and Matthew Era, which is Jarvis Landry and Tyron Matthew, makes me want to come back and play again. Great additions, leaders, and players. That's an interesting choice of words. I mean, I feel like you don't have to be the most astute football fan to understand that as great as Drew Brees was throughout his career, he went out at the perfect time to go out. If you watch this final game with the New Orleans Saints, this did not look like prime Drew Brees. It seemed like a man that was really struggling to throw the football even 10 yards, and this has been something that was memed all season long. And it's nothing against him. You can't all throw the football as far as Tom Brady at the age that Tom Brady is at, especially when you're Drew Brees and you had multiple surgeries on your shoulder. This is a man that tore his labrum in the mid 2000s and also tore his rotator cuff in 2015. I feel like after a specific amount of time, his ability to throw the football just completely waned away. And considering the fact that now he's 43 years old, it'd be interesting if he actually tries to come back to play football. Now, what I'm assuming happened is he saw the amount of engagement this one tweet got and a bunch of people saying, please don't tease the rest of Saints Nation and then decided to tweet out that despite speculation from the media about my future this fall, I'm currently undecided. I may work for NBC. I may play football again. I may focus on business and philanthropy. I may train for the pickleball tour, senior golf tour, coach my kids or all of the above. I'll let you know. Now, I think this was just Drew Brees honestly capitalizing upon the momentum of his previous tweet because he's 43 years old and the last time he played football, he didn't necessarily seem like a guy that should continue playing football. Let's just put it at that. And this is no disrespect to Drew Brees because he is one of the greatest quarterbacks in Saints history, arguably the greatest quarterback in New Orleans Saints history. I mean, this is a guy that was able to bring a Super Bowl to a team that was completely devoid of hope after a complete tragedy happened to them in the 2000s. So he is definitely one of the most beloved players in New Orleans Saints history. But if we're being honest, this isn't necessarily what's best for the New Orleans Saints. And on top of that, I don't think he's being serious at all whatsoever. If you ask me what I think Drew Brees is most likely to do or something that would at least be super adorable for football fans is currently his old head coach, Sean Payton, signed on to become an analyst at Fox Sports. We don't know what Drew Brees' situation with NBC is going to be. There's reports that Drew Brees will not return to NBC after just one season as a studio and game analyst. Apparently it was a mutual decision as Drew Brees preferred to do games over the football night in America studio show and NBC didn't have many NFL games to offer him. NBC soured on Brees' potential after originally believing he could develop into their heir apparent to Chris Collinsworth on Sunday Night Football. Now this story was published and then Drew Brees tweeted what he tweeted in regards to him potentially playing football again as a response. Now currently Fox has as Greg Olson as their top analyst, but you have to admit seeing Drew Brees at least in the studio role as they try to develop him into, I guess, their next coming of Troy Aikman, as Troy Aikman just recently left Fox for ESPN, sounds like a very attractive situation if Drew Brees wants to continue doing what he's doing. Bear in mind, Tom Brady will become the new broadcaster for Fox Sports once he finishes his playing career. So it's gonna be very interesting to see where Drew Brees goes for at least this next season. But I can guarantee you the place that he won't be in is the New Orleans Saints quarterback room. Let me know in the comment section down below what you guys think about the story, man. Aside from that, I'm your boy, Mike. I'm dropping our mic until our next upload.